Ridiculous. Start practicing that spell because you're going to need it for this event. I'm Professor Vokas, and this is Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. The Prisoner of the Vow Brilliant Event will begin this Monday, August 23rd at 11 a.m. Pacific Time to the following Monday, the August 30th to, um, at 11 a.m. Pacific Time as well. So we got one week to do this event. In pretty normal fashion, this will have five brilliant foundables that we're going after, usually following the same pattern that we were used to. Um, we will have a brilliant Dementor as well as a brilliant wanted poster of Sirius Black. This revolves around Prisoner of Azkaban, Prisoner of the Vow. Um, and these two are going to actually appear here in encounters. So these are the kind of be the two purple beams that we're going after during this event. The port key brilliant from this event will be Honeyduke's chocolate. So there'll be port keys, 1.5 kilometers as per usual. Walk them, get a guaranteed fragment of this. The three broomsticks sign will actually be a fragment that's awarded from finishing the fourth set of tasks. You only need one fragment to place it, so you'll just get it then, place the image. So nothing to look out for for this, you're just gonna get it. And lastly is Madame Rosmerta. She is going to be the Brilliant Fortress foundable, meaning if you run fortresses with the Brilliant Runestones given out during this event, you'll have a chance to get her. So that's not 100% like the Porky. You may have to run more to get fragments of her. And there is a task involved with getting her fragment. Before I go any further, I do wanna thank Silverclaw24, for putting these images up on the Discord that I'm using. Uh, much appreciated. It makes it a lot easier to clarify what I'm talking about when I have a great image like you've created for me to be able to put up so people can see what's going on. As I mentioned in the intro, uh, the Ridiculous spell is kind of um, highlighted in this event, meaning you're going to have to do this multiple times. There's two different times you're going to have to cast a whole bunch of them to be able to pass the tasks. And because of that, these six foundables all will have have increased spawn rates, although not all of them will be equally spawning because they're different levels, but you'll just see more of these six. And it really doesn't matter which of these six you see, it'll allow you to cast that spell to potentially meet that task which are the young Golden Trio, so young Ron Weasley, young Hermione Granger, and young Harry Potter, and then young Neville Longbottom, Parvati Patel, and young Remus Lupin. All of them have Boggarts that are um, attacking them in the pictures, and then you have to do Ridiculous to get rid of it. Keep in mind, if you need to do a bunch of good casts, you're going to be able to do it multiple times on one thing, so I don't think it'll be too bad trying to get past those, but we'll talk about when we get to the tasks. And then, of course, we get on to the tasks themselves. You can see the first set of tasks here. You're going to need to pick up some ingredients. You're going to need to use some master notes and then you got to return some uh, wanted posters of Sirius. So the only thing of note really here are the master notes. Keep in mind that's not brewing a potion so you can't do this in advance. You're going to have to wait for the event to begin. Once the event begins you're just gonna have to enter the master notes. Again pick those shortest time potions so that you can enter the master notes. You could actually start a potion and not enter the master notes before this event begins just have it not end brewing before the event begins. So if it takes an hour and a half, start the potion an hour and 15 minutes before the event begins. And as soon as the event begins, if you enter the master notes, there's a good chance it'll finish right then, in which case you can put a new potion in, collect that potion, put a new potion in, enter those master notes, and then you immediately have got your two master notes right there. Now this is really only if you're trying to min max and you're like, no, I want to get past this first step and I'll have to wait for those master notes so I can move to step two. And if you are deciding to try to really burn through that first set of tasks quickly, I would recommend not running any tonic for trace detections, or at least don't run it where you think you're going to finish while you're still on the tonic for trace detection, because moving on to the second set of tasks. You can see we have to get 15 good ridiculous casts, which means just return a lot of these foundables that are going to be appearing anyway. You'll be casting those ridiculous. We have to use two tonics for trace detection, and then we have to return 12 dementors, the brilliant dementors. So again, just purple beams, just returning them. But because we have to use those two tonics. If you put a tonic on, on the first one and you end up getting through it and you're still on that tonic, you're going to have to wait for it to finish before you can start getting credit for using two more. This is something you can't speed up though. To use two tonic for trace detections, it means you're going to have to start one, it's going to have to go its full duration and finish, and then you're going to have to start a second one. Once you start the second one, you'll get credit. You don't have to wait for it to finish, and you could take it into the third step if you wanted to. But just be aware if you're trying to, if your plan, because for me, a lot of times my plan is, okay, I want to get through the first two sets of tasks today when I go play. 
uh, you might want to plan ahead for that to know you're doing that. Or for me, if I know I'm only going to do the first two set of tasks and I'm going to do the third set another day, if using that second tonic is just completely superfluous, as in I'm not going to be able to really make much use of it because I'm already done with what I'm doing, I might even save it and use it when I get ready to do the third set and use it, finish the second, and then start the third as kind of the start of my session. That's up to your strategy and how you like to play the game. But just be aware, when you use the tonics, you are gonna have to wait that full duration for the first one before you can do the second. Moving on to the third set of tasks, you need to earn 7,000 wizarding experience from traces. Keep in mind, Wizarding experience is what lets you level up. It's not challenge experience from fortresses. Fortresses do award you wizarding experience as well, but it wouldn't count for this task. From traces means you have to be just clicking on the traces, the beams out and about. Now it can be the brilliant ones, it can be the six that I talked about, it can be anything, any of those. And if you use a Brufio's Brain Elixir, it does double your experience, as you know, and it will make this event go faster. If you're using a Brufio's, you really only need to earn 3,500 raw experience, which doubled would give you the 7,000. Collect five brilliant Prisoner of the Vow runestones. They've moved this all the way to the third set of tasks. This has happened before. Now, how you get these in the event registry under the brilliant pages, well, the event registry is the brilliant pages. Every time you get 40 family experience from returning brilliant foundables, if you're running any fortresses with brilliant runestones, which you actually probably shouldn't yet, or if you've opened up any port keys that gave you brilliant experience, it's just giving you that experience until you go visit the registry. And when you go visit the registry, it's gonna dump all that experience on you. I've, I've explained this before. If you've done this, you can almost skip ahead a little bit. But anyway, um, you pretty much need, to, don't open your registry until you get to this step. When you go through task set one and two, when you get return all the seriouses, when you return all the dementors, when you probably click on other things and you're returning other brilliant foundables um, from this event. Well, I guess it would just be those two. But when you're returning those, even if you get to where you can place the image and you have that place image screen, if you haven't made it here, you need to force close the game and reopen it so it doesn't force you to go to the event page because when you go there, it's immediately gonna give you all that experience and every time you rank up, you get a runestone, runestone, runestone and you need to get five here. If you wait till you get here to open it, I can almost guarantee you're gonna have five runestones. You might have four and then you have to get a little bit more to go five, but there's a good chance you're gonna have five by this step because a lot of times on task two, when the um, task is there, I tend to have either four or five when I get there usually. So by the third step, I Feel like I'll have even more. And then lastly, you need to defeat 15 foes and wizarding challenges. Just run whatever chambers you want. Doesn't even have to be with event runestones, nothing else. Just run chambers however you see fit, high, low, use other runestones, do serve other purposes other than just this event, except for the fact that you're defeating 15 foes. And for the fourth set of tasks, you need to um, perform 15 great ridiculous casts. Now you've had some practice at it as we've made it for the first three tasks. So hopefully you can get at least to those great casts on this. This one used to give me trouble, and as I practiced it, I did get better at it for sure. And it was actually on the, it was Parvati Patel. It was her trying to get her. I needed her, so I was like, I need to make sure, because she would depart on me a lot when I missed those casts. Earn 7,500 wizarding experience from wizarding challenges. Now, it isn't challenge experience, which is nice, because it should go quicker. Again, a Barufios is going to speed things up, but it's only the experience you get from running challenges. Now, in this case, higher the challenge you run, the more experience you get. Like if you do a dark five with a Brufios on, you're not gonna have to do many of those before you meet this requirement. But if you're running ruins two by yourself, you're gonna have to run a lot more to do this. I tend to go around, if I'm gonna do this by myself, I'm doing like tower two or tower three with a Brufios, and that gets you pretty big chunks where you can actually get through this pretty quickly. Usually at that point, I'm using runestones of foundables that I still need in my registry for other families, not necessarily for the event. Although, because of the next task down, we are gonna to need to do some brilliant runestones. Collect three Madame Rosmerta fragments from using Prisoner of the Vow brilliant runestones. So the runestones that we had to get in the last step, and you probably have even more by now, we need to use those in fortresses and just get her fragment to drop. Again, it's not 100%. You shouldn't have to run too many. I, wouldn't, I would imagine if everybody, if you ran six, you'd have to have really bad luck to not have at least three fragments of her. And the three fragments are gonna let you place her image, but don't place it. In fact, don't place any images you don't think you can re-get by the end of this fourth set of tasks. So if you do manage to get Sirius Black's poster and you're able to place that image, but don't, don't even go to the registry before task three, 
even if you get there, don't place his image unless you're like, well, between test three and four, I'm gonna get you know 20 more of him. I'm gonna be able to place his image again. You want all your images ready to place as you finish this step, which will be four of them. And then this step at the bottom there, you can see you get the three broomsticks fragment. So you'll have all five images ready to place as we go into the bonus tasks. Because as we get into the bonus task, you can see place five brilliant prisoner of the vow images in the registry. It gets you a witch sharpening potion. But anyway, that's why we're saving them or at least if you're going to place one, make sure you can do it again. So you could actually place the fortress one if you knew we were gonna run fortresses more to get that image back. You just want to have all those images ready to go when you get here. So it's not something you have to worry about while you're doing this. Next up is complete one wizarding challenge in your highest unlock chamber. For a lot of us, of course, that means dark five. If you're a newer player, it just means when you go into the fortress, what's the highest level it'll even let you go into? Which if you're brand new, it might be something lower. You just have to do that. And and if you didn't know, once you complete that, when you complete your highest chamber, it always unlocks the next. And that's why a lot of us are on Dark 5, is once you've played long enough and done these events, or even just done those chambers, you eventually have unlocked Dark 5, and there you go, you have to do Dark 5. So I expect a lot of people to be on that Dark 5 probably a day or two into the event. A lot of people are already on those bonus tasks and Dark 5 will probably be a little more crowded. Toward the end of the event, I feel like there'll be less people because the people that were gonna finish the event are already there and the people that aren't gonna finish the event aren't making it there anyway. Earn 12,500 wizarding experience is the next task. Uh, I don't think you have to really specifically go after this. If you're doing the other tasks and just playing the game, if you're running your highest chamber, doing these other things, you're probably gonna get the 12,500 just from playing the game. Use nine of any extimula potions, get you some spell energy. I'm not a fan of this task because as as of yet, there's nothing that they've done that would make me go, oh, I need to use an extimulo. The only thing is adversaries nowadays that I'll use extimulos on because it does make it go faster and saves me usually a lot of energy or even allows me to defeat them before they defeat me, that kind of thing. So I don't like that they're making us use them. It's, it, it's so arbitrary I feel like I'm throwing them away when I get to these tasks again it's why I will purposely brew a lot of lower level extimulo potions so I can just kind of throw them away at tasks like this so that I can save my strongs and potents and I guess my recommendation to you as you go into this event if you don't have extimulos be brewing them knowing for this step you're going to have to use nine so if you don't have nine start brewing them earlier use the master notes and on some extimulos back then and be collecting those ingredients as you go into this event and lastly return 25 foundables guarded by boggarts those six foundables i showed you earlier will all have increased spawn rates from tonic detraction as well as in the wild and all of them are ridiculous which and that's the boggarts so all you need to do is just probably hit a lot of the stuff that's all around you anyway and you're going to meet this this is going to help you get that 12,500 experience which if you had a brufios by the way will make that go quicker but i don't even think that's necessary you'll get that much experience just doing the other tasks in this bonus list you probably noticed i haven't really gone over the uh the rewards what you're getting for this because i do have the graphics up here thank you silverclaw24 again and so you can see what it is and it's nothing special the only thing i'll point out is if you do finish those bonus tasks and get to the very end here you get five defense against the dark arts books it's just a that's the quickest the chunk of defense against the dark arts books you're going to get because when you do adversaries you can get one at a time but i don't see adversaries out of events as much i don't see five adversaries in a day usually i'll see more like one or two so this is a good chunk of that as for the other stuff it's kind of normal stuff that you would normally get anyway you'll also have gotten some spell books from the fourth set of tasks you got three spell books there and then you got one spell book for the 12,500 wizarding experience so if you still need those red spell books either for your profession or the sos tree or for your combat tree um, those are useful there and th that's usually the probably most useful um, items out of these events are those type of rewards. So to recap, most of this pretty standard. The only things you really need to prep for is you're gonna have to do master notes on that first step, two potions. So just kind of be ready for that. Either have no potions brewing or the potion that is brewing shouldn't finish before the event begins and don't enter its master notes. So you can enter it as the event begins. Remember that in step two, you're gonna have to use two tonic for trace detection. So if one is already running as you enter step two, you won't be able to start completing that until that tonic runs out. So maybe don't be on a tonic as you enter step two. When you get to task three, you're going to have to get those five rune stones. So don't visit the event registry before then. And when you get to the bonus tasks, you are gonna to have to place five images. You get one of them for completing the four. So that'll kind of be ready to go. Have the other four images ready to place walks 
some port keys during that time if you are able to, hopefully. Um, and if you want to place any of the other images, just make sure you can build those back up. I didn't mention before, if you aren't able to walk port keys, you still can finish this event. When you get to that five images, you just have to do something twice, as I always recommend. Usually it's to place the fortress image, use the rune stones, and then go place the fortress image again. It's the, it's the quickest way usually to get those fragments back is just to run some quick fortresses. Even if you don't get 100% drop rate, you'll get that, uh, that image back again and you can place it again. And that does count toward five. It doesn't have to be five different images. And then at the end of the bonus task, they give you five fragments of the um, Honeydukes chocolate. So you'll still get to place that image if you feel like you need to complete that page. You will get to complete it. At the end of the bonus task, they're gonna give you that image again anyway. Which means you didn't actually have to walk the port keys to finish the page. You're walking the port keys just to make the bonus task go quicker. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out. As I Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Knox.